Hi guys, I'm Trufman from Overclocking TV. We're here at the HW Bot Anniversary event. I'm here with uh, Roman. How are Roman? How are, how are you doing? Hi, well, I'm doing pretty well now. I had some good sleep last night, so all good. Yeah, that has been a, a long week here at, uh, at the Computex because we, it's just the, uh, the, the few days after Computex now. There were so many overclocking events. Uh, which one did you attend? Uh, mainly the G-Skill event. I was attending the uh, OC World Cup to bench for 10,000 US dollar. But I failed, so I didn't get anything. <laughs> I made it fourth, which is still good. I'm still, I'm still fine with that, so it was okay. How did you qualify for this uh, GSKLOC World Cup? Um, it was an online qualification on HWBOT, and we had to bench uh, Super P32M and Fire Strike with uh, GTX 780 Ti. And I made it fourth there as well for the qualification, and top six could uh, qualify for the live qualification. Yeah. And that, that even was uh, live during the Computex, during the Computex, during the on the show floor. Um, what do you think about this kind of overclocking event to, to be on big trade shows? It's a lot of noise and stuff like this. So what, do you, what was your feeling when you were competing there? Actually, I really liked it. It was a really good feeling, to be honest. And uh, it's, it's not that bad if people are watching. If you, if you uh, focus on your stuff, you can still ignore them. That's why I usually wear headphones when I'm benching, because then people cannot talk to you and uh, you can still focus on your stuff. So it's, it's pretty cool. But that's one of the major, major things. You cannot explain what you're doing. And most people that go watch that are expecting to see what's going on. It's, it's the same with the live stream. So uh, what, what would you be the best recommendation yet for that? Well, um, for the Cheesecake booth, they had an announcer which uh, was able to do it in Chinese and in English. So I think like every 30 minutes, they were explaining what we are doing and who we are. So I think that was pretty good. Good. Let's talk back about the uh, HWBot anniversary events. So basically, there's a lot of overclockers here from basically like all the top 10s is here. Uh, a lot of guests from everywhere around the, around the world. And they can bench whatever they want. What do you think about this HWBot event? I think after Computex it's a pretty good thing to have because people are usually out of energy and um, they come here to relax and can bench if they want, they don't have to. Um, if they maybe got some new hardware from, from Computex, they can test it here. Um, some people are trying to put uh, up some good scores for the Team Cup, which is just released now and will end in uh, August. And yeah, I think it's just an event to meet other benchers and have some fun. So we, w this is more like an open bench m benching uh, session, right? Like everyone can come in, just request a seat and have LN2 on display and, and use that. So all the uh, overclocking events happen to have a judge to qualify and to, to verify actually the, the benchmark that was uh, running. So w what for you is the main requirement for the judge at an overclocking convention to, to happen to be like serious and have no cheating and have no bending the rules too much? Yeah, since since we are usually using the HWBot rules, you have to be a part of the HWBot community and you have to know all the benchmarks which are online there, know the rules for the benchmarks, know um, which result you will get on the given clocks. So you have to be very active, know the latest hardware, the rules, that's the, the most important part, yeah. So that is for all the live competitions, but what happened for online competitions? Where do you, where can you validate that you really have a world record? And because I can do a world record on my computer, but if no one validates that, it's, it's not gonna be. It's just gonna be like me stating that I have one. Well, on HWBot we have uh, very um, strong rules. Uh, we know if, if you have a CPU at 6 GHz and a graphics card at 1 GHz, we know which result uh, you will have. Um, you have to show um, validations, for example, a CPU-C validation link or, or just a Windows on, on, the, on a screenshot, validation links from FutureMark. And um, if we have word records, for us, they only count if they're on HWBot because that's the biggest database for, for overclocking results. And um, looking at the, the, um, the rules we are using, I think it's very, very hard to fake anything. So, so if it's not on HWBot, you cannot claim it's a world record. Yeah, that's what I would say, yeah. Um, rather, uh, but more the uh, like the online competition. There's uh, quite a few during the during the years, and there's now a few different leagues. There's the pro overclocking league, so that is getting more professional, like more like a, an esport thing. Uh, what do you think about the all this community to become more professional and to compete against each other in teams ranking? Well, I think everybody is trying to um, to achieve like an. A higher st a state of overclocking. A lot of people start with just some cheap hardware, 
and they they want to achieve to be able to run four-way systems or something like that. So um, they have to go up in the ranking um, to get a b uh, better support from vendors. Um, for that, it's mandatory to uh, to uh, to step up in the leagues. You're starting in the Enthusiast League, you go in the XOC League, and like the highest thing you could reach is the Pro OC Cup at the moment. And once you're in there, um, you're participating in a team, which is very very useful because um, usually the hardware you have to use is very expensive Most, mostly for every three months we are hosting a um, competition with four cards and you, not everybody can afford four cards every three months so if you're working together in a team with five people it's much easier also the support is easier um, if everybody has different contacts for example one has contacts to ASUS the other one to Gigabyte you can just combine your, uh, your skills and your co uh, connections and it makes things a lot easier during the Computex week, we had so many live overclocking shows and competitions. Uh, some of them were broadcasted, like the Intel OC Challenge and the Kingston HyperX uh, OC Takeover. Uh, what do you think is mandatory to have in, on the broadcast to have the best experience of this overclocking competition? I think for, for uh, spectators, it's the most important thing is to have a, a professional team, which is um, having a good equipment, um, knows which areas to show, uh, commenting of course on, on, the, on the results because if you just see always the same scene uh, you, you don't know what's going on. You need people explaining to the, uh, to the newcomers what's going on, which benchmarks are uh, do we using, which, which hardware and like, like OCTV is doing actually. Yeah. Um, do you think that the, uh, the screen broadcasting is going to be a huge feature to see and understand what's going on on, the, on each setup of the overclockers? Yeah, I think it's very, very important. Um, I know that you guys are trying to uh, to show the each uh, screen of the of the guys when they are benching. I think that's going to be the most in interesting thing in the future, and it will also be more interesting for the spectators. Yeah. And then that can be can become a real esport with a huge following on the on then after. Uh, talking about esports, what do you think about like having overclocking getting more and more professional, so it becomes like a real esport? We have uh, personal ranking leagues and we have the pro overclocking leagues. Um, over the past ten years, HWV have been a huge part of this uh, getting professional thing. Uh, what do you expect for the for the future? Maybe next year or maybe for the next ten years. I think we're uh, we're at a point where we're getting more and more respect for what we are doing. People realize that it's um, it's not that easy to achieve the, the results we are doing. You have to know a, a lot about the techniques, um, about the hardware, and if if you do it more professional, I think you we will also get more people watching it. And um, I think HWBot is the the biggest um, and most important part of that. Definitely agree with that. It's been ten years they're pushing that art, and now it's. It's just the, the beginning. We, we de we've been ramping back and now we just need to mature the, the, the few things. Um, let's get back to the HWBOT anniversary OC event. So th there was this, this event here at Computex. Uh, all of the other recruiters can come, bench on the award they, on the award they want. There's no competition, there's no cash prize here, but that is uh, one of the best show off the overclickers, the top overclickers can do to, to, to show we are professional, we can do it and we can organize that. So what do you have to say to the, to the, uh, the sponsor that is sponsored this event like G-Skill, uh, Gigabyte, Cooler Master, NMAX? I'm very happy that they are supporting us to be honest. So I have to say thanks to everybody who is supporting us. Um, for us it's, it's very cool to have an event like that. It's probably even better than any live competition because we can just we can just um, uh, exchange our uh, our experiences and um, communicate with our overclockers and I think events like that will be very very important in the future as well and I think vendors are realizing that as well that's why we're getting a, a good support here so thanks for everybody supporting us so thanks to Gigabyte, G-Skill, Cooler Master, NMX and Jelly Solutions well, thank you, Roman, for your time here at the HWBOT SC anniversary. Uh, we, had, we had a lot of fun here, and we hope to see you in the next few competitions, maybe as a, compete, a contestant or as a judge. Thanks. Welcome.